I visited a special place made possible by the dramatic events of our history. This is the USS Midway, an American aircraft carrier which was commissioned shortly after World War II. Its name commemorates the decisive Battle of Midway, which signified American victory over the Japanese. A battle that inspired a 1976 film with an all-star cast. To hear it from Japanese naval captain and published author Mitsuo Fushida, with Midway as the turning point, the fortunes of war appeared definitely to shift from our own to the Allied side. The defeat taught us many lessons and impaled our navy. For the first time since the outbreak of war, to indulge in critical self-examination. The USS Midway, which would be inspired by this great battle, is 1,001 feet long. 258 feet wide. It caused 45,000 tons of water displacement in 1945 and 54,000 tons in 1992. And a 2019 film with yet another star-studded cast. This midway was directed by Roland Emmerich, best known for Independence Day. It had mixed reviews, and it is not a prestigious film, but it has been observed as more historically accurate than the 1976 Midway, and naval historians have called it one of the most realistic horror films ever made. It is powered by 12 boilers, producing 212,000 horsepower. It generated enough electrical power to support a city of one million residents. It has four 18-foot propellers weighing 22 tons each. Its max speed is 33 knots. It had a crew of 4,500, a monthly payroll of $1.2 million, 1,500 telephones, over 2,000 compartments, 200 miles of piping, 2.23 million gallons of ship fuel capacity, 1.24 million gallons of jet fuel capacity, and 240,000 gallons of fresh water used daily. Get ready to learn about the history of this ship, the museum experience, and some of my own thoughts. I mean, it was only the longest serving U.S. aircraft carrier of the 20th century. I visited the USS Midway on July 4th, which I felt was the perfect occasion, and I don't think I was alone in having that sentiment. Heads up, they had a security check, and they made me check my drones, which I had in my backpack. Adult admission is $31. Youth ages 6 to 12 is $21. Veterans are also $21. Active military, police, and firefighters are free, as well as children under 5. The USS Midway Museum has three primary decks. The hangar deck, the flight deck, and below decks. The hangar deck highlights include the Visitor Information Center, the Battle of Midway exhibit and theater, access to the gallery deck which had many of the best exhibits, like the radar room, flight simulators, which I had no time for, the gift shop, and the cafe. Highlights of the flight deck include many restored aircraft, the island featuring the bridge where the captain navigated the ship, and landing and launching talks. Highlights of below decks include the laundry, galley, sick bay, and engine room. The hangar deck serves as the central area for the museum. And first, I decided to check out the exhibit on the Battle of Midway and the short film. 
There are plenty of better videos about the Battle of Midway out there, so I will keep this quick. The Midway Atoll is located approximately at the midway point between North America and Asia. The Japanese fleet had an advantage with four aircraft carriers versus America's three, and they had an advantage in generally every other category except land-based aircraft. The objective was to protect the US base at Midway and damage the Japanese fleet via an ambush. Most of the battle occurred in June of 1942. Japan has suffered a huge defeat, losing 248 aircraft, four big carriers, a heavy cruiser, and around 3,000 men. By comparison, the US Navy loses about 150 planes, one carrier, a destroyer, and just over 300 men. The argument for Midway being one of the most critical moments in the Pacific War is absolutely valid. The loss of four Japanese carriers really did shift the momentum in the Pacific from what had been a really uninterrupted stream of Japanese victories. It also gave a great boost to the whole Allied war effort, handing them the initiative. Before Midway, the Japanese carriers dictated the flow of the war between America and Japan. After Midway, it was the Americans who dictated the, the pace and the sequencing of the war. But when we turned the tide in Midway, it was a relief. It was, a, it was a great pleasure, and it's gone down in history now as, as one of the greatest naval battles of all time. According to this, the Battle of Midway shortened the war by more than one year. At the Midway exhibit, I also learned about the Doolittle Raid, which was America's immediate revenge after Pearl Harbor, in which Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle led a small group of B-25 bombers on a strike against Japan. I also learned of the Battle of the Coral Sea, which inspired its own movie. U.S. carriers stopped the Japanese advance toward Australia. The battle was fought by the USS Lexington and the USS Yorktown. The Lexington was sunk and the Yorktown was badly damaged. Of course, these were both leading up to the Battle of Midway. The USS Midway was part of a new class of ship called the Supercarrier. The supercarrier design was developed during World War II to overcome issues that led to ship losses early in the war. When hit by torpedoes, ships with large compartments tended to roll over when one side of their hull filled with water. In addition, bombs penetrated early aircraft carriers' wooden flight decks and exploded among aircraft and fuel supplies stored below. The new ship design featured many smaller compartments that isolated flooding, blast damage, and fire. The new carriers could counter-flood non-damaged compartments within the hull to maintain an even keel, which simply means balance. The flight decks of these carriers were constructed with three inches of steel, with another two inches on the hangar deck for greater protection against bombs. Engineering equipment below the hangar deck was enclosed in an additional two inches of steel. The Midway was built during World War II over a period of 17 months, but it missed the war by one week. It was built in Newport News, Virginia. It was launched in March of 1945 and commissioned on September 10, 1945. It was the largest warship in the world in 1945. Currently, that distinction belongs to the USS Gerald R. Ford. It was also the most heavily armed and armored carrier, and the first US Navy ship too large for the Panama Canal. In 1946, the Midway became the first US carrier to operate in midwinter subarctic conditions. It was called Operation Frostbite and it took place in Canadian waters over three months. These tests were significant 
because the threat of Russia would require aircraft carriers to operate in Arctic waters. Then, in 1947, Operation Sandy took place, in which a captured V-2 rocket was launched from the deck of the USS Midway. It was the first launch of a large rocket from a ship at sea. The launch took place several hundred miles south of Bermuda. This is perhaps my favorite part of this ship's history, but I love the cold too. And then came Midway's first combat deployment to Vietnam in 1965. It served three tours. Suffice to say, this is not an endorsement of the war. For two days during the fall of Saigon in 1975, Midway was a large floating base for large Air Force helicopters, which evacuated more than 3,000 refugees during Operation Frequent Wind. In 1990, Midway deployed to the Persian Gulf in response to the Iraqi seizure of Kuwait. Midway was the flagship carrier for naval air forces in Operation Desert Storm and Operation Desert Shield. More than 3,000 missions were launched with no losses. A volcano dormant for 600 years erupted in multiple explosions that sent up huge clouds of ash visible 60 miles away in Manila. NBC's Keith Miller is there. And the final mission of the USS Midway would be the evacuation of civilian personnel from Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines after the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Clark Air Base, 18 miles from the volcano, was deserted. 15,000 Americans were evacuated Monday, effectively shutting down one of the most important U.S. bases overseas. On April 11th, 1992, the Midway was decommissioned. It was stored in Bremerton, Washington, until it was donated to the San Diego Aircraft Carrier Museum organization in 2003. It opened as the USS Midway Museum in June of 2004. The hangar deck had planes like the F-4F Wildcat Fighter, which could travel 331 miles per hour. This is the avionics repair shop. This is one of the centers where the technical magic of aircraft repair takes place. And get this, every bench has all the tools, documents, and specialized test equipment to get the job done. And watch your step. All throughout the ship, the passageways have tripping hazards. I never tripped, but I never had to run either. Can you imagine having to run? That is a commanding officer's office. And another commanding officer's office? And another commanding officer's office? This is a squadron ready room. Each squadron on an aircraft carrier is assigned a ready room. This is home away from home for 40 officers. Their office, living room. There are bulletin boards, charts, and mementos from home. TV monitors provide weather and flight briefing information, along with pilot landing aid video. The USS Midway has a helicopter exhibit, which I pass through quickly. And there were some other offices and control rooms. And these are the sailors' bunks. This phone just looked cool. And then my favorite area, the Command Information Center. The lighting is just so cool. 
And the men and women in this area had access to one of my favorite things, coffee. Including the coffee maker and plenty of mugs. And here's some actual footage from the Command Information Center from 1991. The enormous task of keeping track of these aircraft while in flight falls upon a few radar operators. Well, our primary mission is to uh, depart and, uh, and land the aircraft on board the ship in as little time as possible. The anchor room is pretty cool. The anchor chain comes in 90-foot sections called shots, which connect by detachable links. Each chain link weighs approximately 150 pounds. And the total length of the chain varies by source, from 1400 feet all the way to 2000 feet. After leaving the anchor room, you re-enter the main hangar deck and see one of the steam accumulators used to launch jets from 0 to 160 miles per hour or more in less than 2 seconds. The ship store. This is the Command Master Chief's quarters. This is the chow line. And this is part of one of the dining areas. The post office. The machine shop. Engine room. Engine control room and a few other things that caught my eye. And I missed the chapel and the CPO mess hall, which is quite fancy. Officers could only go to this hall by invitation. Then it was time to move on. Then I went up to the flight deck. I don't know why I wanted to get in this guy's face. Maybe it was just the cool shades. And you can actually get in and check out the various planes and helicopters. Honestly, I was in a hurry at this point, so I pretty quickly saw as much as I could. Then they had these cool viewing platforms. I don't know what they are actually called. Then this was probably the most popular spot for taking photos. This is called the island, which I had no time to explore, but it contains the bridge, the steering and navigation center of the ship. I got these clips from the USS Midway YouTube channel. Then I quickly peeked at the gift shop and the cafe. And that's it for this video. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you are new and spread the magic.